We start off with the latest coming in from Afghanistan. The Taliban who entered Kabul have taken control of the Afghan presidential palace. The Taliban also now hold all of Afghanistan's border crossings amid their rapid offensive across the country. Afghanistan's embattled president Ashraf Ghani has left for Tajikistan after Taliban entered the capital Kabul. از نیروهای دفاعی امنیتی میخوایم که در تامین امنیت همکاری کنند از نیروهای حرکت طالبان میخوایم که بدون وارد شدن بشر مجال بدن به صحبت ها که دوام وضعیت یا خدا نخواسته بر هم خوردن وضعیت امنیتی باعثی تلفات مردم باعث خساره به مردم نشه Former President Hamid Karzai has announced a committee formed for a smooth transition of power to the Taliban as the current administration has fled the country. Abdullah Abdullah, the chairman of the Haug High Council for National Reconciliation and uh, Gulbuddin Hekmatyar and former President Hamid Karzai are members of this committee. Earlier, Karzai appealed the Taliban to protect the safety of the people and property. نیروهای امنیتی و نیروهای تحریک اسلامی طالبان میخوایم که در هر جایی که اصلا امنیت جان و مال مردم نگاه کنن و توجه به امنیت جان و مال مردم بکنن هم نیروهای امنیتی ما هم نیروهای تحریک اسلامی طالبان و با مردم سلام میکنم که با آرامش در خانه های خود باشن ما در کوشش هستیم که با بزرگان طالبان از راه مسالمت و برادری و وطنداری و وطن دوستی مشکل افغانستان حل شد. The Taliban say they have entered multiple districts in Kabul to ensure security. Earlier they also said that in order to prevent looting and chaos, their forces will occupy outposts that have been evacuated by the security forces. They have asked the people to not panic. Meanwhile, Afghans trying to flee the country are waiting at the border to cross into Pakistan at the border town of Chaman. People carrying their belongings standing at the gate crossing point manned by Pakistani soldiers. The crossing point has been choked with new arrivals with people trying to flee while the border remains open. The U.S. withdrawal from the country opened a clear path for the Taliban to take on and defeat the Afghan security forces. Many major cities fell with little or no resistance. Our principal diplomatic correspondent Siddhant Sibyl joining us on the broadcast with more details. Siddhant, if you can summarize for our viewers what we have seen unfold over the last few hours and the efforts that are being made by India to ensure the safety of its nationals uh, vis-a-vis the evacuation efforts that have been underway. Well, Molly, today was a day of dramatic development. Seldom we see a day which, which, which goes through such ups and downs in terms of developments with each passing minute. But talking about the development, uh, uh, the Afghan president leaving the country is something that nobody would have uh, believed uh, even till yesterday. And he has now left the country. Uh, also, when it comes to the situation on uh, the ground, if we look at uh, what's happening, uh, there is complete chaos in terms of who is right now uh, in the hold of the situation. The Afghan government has technically collapsed tonight and tonight of course is to be the first night that the Afghans will see where the uh, old uh, structure, the old governance structure which emerged out of 2001 invasion of the Americans uh, will not be present uh, and it will be a long night uh, but largely there will be geopolitical ramifications uh, and what will be the ramifications is a bit the big question because there are many countries including India worried about uh, these territories might be used by terror groups like uh, the Lashkar-e-Taiba, something that India has been talking about. 
But if you look at what India has been doing, India's number one priority has been its nationals, its citizens uh, in uh, the country. Uh, a gradual process indeed had started over a period of time and India was uh, able to bring back these uh, nationals to, uh, to India. In fact, uh, uh, just a few hours uh, uh, ago, the Air India flight landed here at the Delhi airport, which not only included Indian nationals, but also uh, certain members of the Afghan government, the former Afghan government uh, who were present, they were Afghan women who talked about how there can be a reversal in the gains made in the last 20 years, uh, uh, gains which we have been talking about for last uh, many uh, years, the rights of the women, the rights of the minorities, something that India has also been pointed out. So the big question is that will these gains be reversed by the incoming governance structure? The transition team, it, it looks like, is it will, will, uh, is being announced. The council, of course, has been announced. Uh, but will this be a Taliban which will be much less harsher as the Taliban which we saw in 1990s is a question only time can tell. There have been reactions coming from the international community. Um, Canada has reacted. UK Prime Minister has reacted. Uh, U.S. Uh, Secretary of State Antony Blinken has reacted. Uh, India, of course, is expected to react as well. India is closely monitoring the developments in Kabul tonight. Uh, India, of course, uh, uh, is the chair of the United Nations Security Council for the month of August. So the, his the responsibility of history is heavy on the shoulders of New Delhi. In fact, uh, India's external affairs minister, Dr. S. J. Shankar, this week will be in New York to chair two important meetings. One, of course, the meeting on the UN peacekeeping and another on counter-terrorism. So we do expect India's reaction to come on uh, the current situation. India was the biggest backer of the Afghan government, but uh, there is no Afghan government now. It is uh, 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 Afghanistan, which is new in terms of the governance structure. Uh, and what will be its implications for the region, for New Delhi, is something we might get to know in the next 24 hours to 48 hours. Right, we're leaving it there for the moment. Siddhant Sibyl, uh, thanks very much for a quick roundup of what we have witnessed. Uh, also with us is our correspondent Anas Malik, who has been uh, getting us the very latest uh, from Kabul. We will uh, get in Anas's uh, updates and inputs in just a short while from now. These are the latest uh, updates that we have been getting to you from Afghanistan. Uh, prisoners also have been leaving Kabul jail after being broken out by the Taliban. And speaking on the issue uh, and the way the crisis has unfolded, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has said that countries should not recognize the Taliban as the Afghan government and urged all Britons and eligible Afghans to leave the country as soon as possible. Uh, what the UK will be doing is working with our partners in uh, in the UN Security Council, in the, the, the P5, uh, to get that uh, in NATO. Uh, there's an North Atlantic Council on Friday to get that message over. We don't want anybody uh, bilaterally recognising uh, the Taliban. We want a united uh, position amongst all the like-minded, as far as we can uh, get one, uh, so that we uh, do whatever we can uh, to prevent Afghanistan lapsing back into uh, being a, a breeding ground for terror. Uh, it's clear uh, that there is going to be, uh, or there is very, going to be very shortly, a, a new government in Kabul or a new uh, political dispensation, however you want to, to put it. And I think it's very important that uh, the West collectively uh, should work together uh, to get over to uh, that new government, be it by the Taliban or, or anybody else, uh, that uh, nobody wants Afghanistan once again to be a, a breeding ground for, for terror. And uh, we don't think it, that it's in the interests of, of the people of Afghanistan that it should lapse back into that, uh, that state, that pre-2001 uh, state. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.